Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't got a massive bowl of popcorn right now, one of those comedy sized bags filled with popcorn, go get one because today's story time episode is gonna blow your socks off. It is insane. All right, so about like four weeks ago, I wanna say, there was a video uploaded and it was that one right there. The craziest vintage card haul ever found. And trust me when I say, it is a 45 minute video of pure bliss. They are going over sealed booster boxes, they are going over sealed booster packs, and then the magnitude of cards. Like you see all those booster boxes that are unwrapped right there? Those are filled with either completed sets, or double ups of ultra rare hollows, EXs, or whatever it may be. Now, I'm gonna link that video top line in the description. It's the craziest thing you're gonna watch today, trust me. But it was uploaded by none other than a personal friend of mine, Pokey Rev. Now, Pokey Rev's been a friend for quite a while now. He sent a mystery box into the channel, and he uploads some of the craziest content ever. So I'm gonna link his whole channel down below as well. But, the more you watch this video, the more you think, how does someone find this big of a Pokemon card haul? Like dude, they're literally unboxing the rarest stuff ever! And ever since I interviewed Sam, Hollow Pokemon, about finding all those base set booster boxes that were trapped in a storage locker, I've been so curious about the world of just finding massive hauls and grails of Pokemon products. So I thought to myself, you know what, let's do a follow up episode because this was only found 4 weeks ago and I think I'd find it absolutely fascinating that in 2020, how do you come across something like this? How does this go down? And what sort of things did you find in that like entire haul that I guess you bought off the dude? So last week on the channel, I sat down with Pokerev and I interviewed him about this insane pickup that he managed to find. It's a fascinating interview. He's an absolute legend for taking time out of his day to come on the channel, but here we go. This is the interview I did with Pokerev about the most insane vintage haul that he found four weeks ago. Oh my goodness, it's crazy guys. Alrighty guys, we are officially here with none other than the man, the myth, the legend. Pokey Rev, how are you doing dude? I see you, he's in the Pokey Cave. I, I, I told you guys it was good. How's things dude? <laughs> What's going on Ando? Great to be here. Oh, I, I'm just looking at the background, I see the neon rev sign behind you. It's looking, look at that, there's already a base set box in there. But today I officially thought, you know what, we're going to talk to Pokey Rev because recently he uploaded a video of what was, is it your biggest like Pokemon vintage find you found so far? Biggest, 100%. I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I just saw, I think I saw the thumbnail alone. And I was like blown away on the edge of my, edge of my seat. And I started watching it. I was like, okay, we got to, I got to ask a few questions about this. So before we start asking questions, I think, do you want to put people in your shoes and be like, what, what was that day like finding all of that stuff? Or how'd you go about finding that stuff? And what was the reaction when you found out it was actually legit? Yeah, so first off, my good buddy, cool trainer Ryan, was the one that actually got in contact with him, so shout out to him. And basically, he was the one talking to the guy on the phone. He literally would sit there and talk to the guy on the phone for like four hours straight and listen to his story. Now, this guy was so interesting, like possibly one of the most interesting people on the planet. Not even just saying that, he pulled up in a white sketchy van oh no what the ones your parents tell you to stay away from when you're a kid like don't go near the white vans <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly that oh. one. pulled up and he, he pulled up and he had like a, yeah it was a huge white van and i was just like oh no what's gonna happen now so but what happened was the best thing ever when he pulled the side open and just started pulling out like cases factory cases of pokemon cards from the what? ex era oh my god like, yeah, and that is the era of Pokemon where it was at such a low time for Pokemon, but the quality of the sets and the artworks are like unbelievable. So the guy's story, first of all, he's from Boston. So he was telling us about his Chazad. That's how they say it out there. He said, we got a box and it has a Chazad in it. So he's pulling out everything. He's pulling out the Charizards. He's pulling out everything. He's telling us his story. This guy is probably in his mid fifties. Wow. And you would never, ever believe that this guy was a pro, like a like a really good tournament player for Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. He would go to tournaments and he would dominate like legitimately would win the tournaments. <laughs> That's unreal. So like so like when when the EX era came out, would he, he'd be like 30 something years old? Yeah, so he was about 30 like like early 30s or so. Unreal, all right. And he was going in and first thing he would do, imagine this, he goes into a card shop and he says and the guy, the owner of the card shop would always call him on his phone and say, hey, we got Dragon Frontiers in, we got Rocket Returns, whatever the set was, he'd say, I got this in, I'm gonna hold you a case. 
Now, a case. So I actually have some of this stuff right here next to me. Dragon Frontiers. Yes. He had a case has six of these in it. He's like, all right, I'll grab my case. You get home, you sit down, and crack the box open, and you just start tearing into packs, completing the sets. So and I don't know, for, for EX era sets, they're huge. There's every card comes in reverse. There's gold stars. There's not hollow. It's crazy. So he goes through and he open up each box and take out all the cards. Now imagine opening up six whole booster boxes of each set. You're gonna have a lot, and I mean a lot of, of extras. And that's where all of it went into empty booster boxes filled with these cards, and they were all mint because he would literally take it out the pack. Put it in the box. Take it out the pack. Put it really? in the box. Reverse. I already have that one. Oh, crystal, crystal Charizard. I already have that one. Put it in there. It filled them up. He was pulling them out of the car, telling us his story. He had over ten thousand cards of loose mint cards coming out of that van. And my eyes, I could not. I had to like rub my eyes. Yeah. Is this real? I was like, this can't be happening. And the best part about it is there were some boxes and packs that he didn't open because he completed the set so oh my goodness buy red leaf green no way you're gonna buy red leaf green are you kidding he already completed the set so he had an extra box of it completely sealed so i was like and he, when he found out what this stuff was worth he couldn't believe it he was like in shock because he was telling us that his mom kept calling him and nagging him on the phone saying Come over here and get your cards. They've been in the, our basement, you know, for years and years. Like, I'm going to throw these out. And yeah. he's like, Ma, Ma, throw the cards out. <laughs> throw them out. And she's like, oh, I'm just going to save them. You don't, you never know. You never know. And then he's like, fine, I'll go get them. He went there and he got them. And he started looking up the card prices. And, I mean, once he started looking them up, his mind was blown. Now, there's one other crazy part about this. For Skyridge and Everybody knows Skyridge. I mean, it is one of the most sought after sets of all time. He had a case of Skyridge. Now, he completed the set by opening four booster boxes. And what happened was, he was going through and opening each booster box years later. This is like a few months ago. Checking to see which cards were in them. Now, he opened this Skyridge booster box. Oh my gosh, that's mid different. No way! What? We're still in it. No. And that was two. There's another one of these. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, are you kidding me right now? No way. The best part was that somebody actually told me that he probably opened it because he wanted to complete the box toppers, which, you know, in the Skyridge is always a box topper on top here, a jumbo card. So he probably opened this final two just to grab out the, the just for a box topper. Yeah. Just to get the box topper. This is unreal. Oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. That's... That is cool. So how, how did Cool Ryan, uh, Cool Trainer Ryan, actually find this guy originally? The, the guy was on eBay. He yeah. Found the guy on eBay through another friend. Wow. Which, uh, he actually bought a few of the boxes. I think it was EX Standstorm. And then he called Ryan because they're really good friends. Said, hey, there's this guy on eBay that has. I think he has all this stuff. Like I think he has a lot more stuff. And, and he called him, and then I mean that's when he started talking and. Uh, he started telling his story, talking about his story, about his Chaz eyes, <laughs> and he said, <laughs> so what he would do is, when I was saying how he would do the tournaments and always play competitively, he would go into tournaments, and you gotta think back then, mostly it was a lot of kids playing in the tournaments, there wasn't a lot of adults back then, yeah. I know how it is now, yeah. I mean, we're, I'm, I'm like almost 30 years old, I love Pokemon now, so back then it was more kids, so he would roll up, He'd go up to the counter and he'd have to build his deck and he'd need, you know, Charizards, whatever the cards were that were expensive. He said he said he would see kids up on the counter, you know, trying to trade up all their bulk cards, you know, grabbing all their bulk, like, oh, if I, if I trade in this many of these, like, I need to get my Charizard, like, oh, I just need some more bulk. He's like, I'd just roll up, I'd throw 60 bucks on the counter, lay it on there, grab my Charizard, put my deck together, and then he'd sit down and he'd start destroying everything. Dude, this, that, that's, the, that's the craziest story I think I've heard ever, like, as if, as if someone that was that into Pokemon cards had no idea that he was sitting on, like, the biggest gem or, like, throne of value. That's unreal. Well, I, I know the Sky Ridge is probably, like, the, the best find of the lot, but in terms of, like, a single card, is there one that you found that really stood out as, like, this is the best one out of the whole lot that we reckon we found? <sighs> well, one of my personal favorites was the EX, uh, Entei EX, mm. which... 
Uh, the EX or uh, just the EX cards, like you know, the top yeah. gold EX ones are really awesome. Now we didn't. I don't think we got any any gold stars out of it, but um, just going through that video and just seeing like every card EX or like these are cards that uh, you just don't like. Ugh. They're just so hard to find because in, in the EX era, since every card came in reverse, it's like, what are the odds of somebody pulling that nowadays, that exact card that you found in mint condition? It's ridiculous. So now you've got like all these gemming cards though, how many are you going to get PSA graded? Have you thought about grading just yet? And where are you going to take this from here? Are you selling some, keeping some? Yeah, so we thought about it a lot and definitely anything that shines, anything that shines up to the light or sunlight that reflects, let's yeah. go into PSA. Because, I mean, once you send those cards to PSA, it's just, number one, they're going to be protected. And number two, you know, if you get a, a PSA 10 on it or even a PSA 9 nowadays, the price value increases. So anything that shines is going straight to PSA. Yeah. And then for the non-hollow bulk, that stuff as well becomes even, it becomes valuable created as in, in PSA, you know, created by PSA as well. So probably will slowly grade some of that yeah and then other than that like there's there was some other cool stuff i have a little bit over here like some um deoxys uh booster packs which wow and they're like going on they're like skyrocketing in value so that requires a gold star too yeah and the best thing about these is we know for sure that they never were weighed or anything yeah. because number one he didn't even know what weighing was number two you know he would just crack into a box and just start opening packs up like <laughs> was was the man like super happy when you said you wanted to buy it all? Like he said, ah, oh, awesome, I found a buyer. Or was he like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to part with this? So it's funny you mention that because he was. It was like it was kind of bittersweet. Um, he so the thing is, he grew up and he he collected it with his son, and his son was the one that kept him motivated to keep collecting. Kept him, you know, the fun was there because he had somebody to play with now when his son grew out of it you know it kind of faded yeah. away for him and he kind of brought it up as a distant good memory but now like he said he knows that it's going to you know somebody who will really appreciate it and yeah. we definitely will like we're, we're gonna we're gonna keep at least 50 percent of the stuff for our bone collections for sure uh, just because it's just ex era it's something that i'm really learning to appreciate over the years i didn't grow up with it but it's so cool to see it now. It's like it's up there for me with Wizard of the Coast era for sure. But that that I can't I can't believe that story. And I think watching that video, I was like just blown away that you managed to find like all of those booster boxes off one guy. And I know I had to get a bit of insight from the man, the myth, the legend himself. So I really appreciate you taking the time to quickly come on the channel and uh, explain what exactly happened in that video. Uh, and by all means, do you have anything to shout out? I'm going to link your channel down below, of course. Is there anything else people should uh, check out? You do live streams how many times a week? Three times a week. Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Poker Rev on YouTube. Yep. Um, I mean, this we open all kinds of stuff here, so definitely check it out. I, I really appreciate it. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview with PokeRev. Thank you again to him for just taking time out of his day to explain what happened and go a bit behind the scenes as to what it's like having that big of a Pokemon haul picked up and, I don't know, that big of a transaction go down because I always love these types of videos because I feel like I get to be put in the shoes of a massive collector and just exploring and finding the grails that are out there. It's kind of like interviewing Indiana Jones, finding the treasure. I'm curious though if you guys like these types of interview videos and uh, you're enjoying these like massive haul finds that we get to find these people that found the craziest Pokemon card hauls ever. I am personally loving it. Um, as I said, it's what I always dreamed about when I was a kid. So to find people that are actually finding this kind of stuff out there and for it to be this recent as well, unreal. Anyway, I'm going to leave a link to PokeRev's channel down below. Definitely demolish a like button if you love this series and you love today's video. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for subscribing. We're almost at 2 million subscribers. But most of all, going to keep on gaming. Alright, until next time guys, I'll see you then.